Hello everyone and welcome to a new episode of today's youth and today we will be meeting with an Egyptian student studying abroad. He's studying civil engineering in Canada. He's also a squash player and he's going to be telling us more about his experience abroad and of course uh, his um, ability to uh, make an equilibrium between his studies and his uh, uh, love for squash. Thank you very much for joining us today, uh, Noor Al Adli. Thank you very much for being with us today. Thank you for having me and for this great opportunity to be on uh, national television. Uh, Noor, of course, it's our pleasure having you also. Uh, tell me, uh, why did you decide to uh, go and study abroad? Uh, first of all, I saw it as an experience for me to grow personally, gain some more experience that would later on benefit me in life to meet people of different cultures. All these things would later on help me when I decide to, to take a step after university. So in general, I think it's, it's a really good experience for, 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 for personal growth mainly. Mm -hmm. Right, uh, no, you were here in Egypt studying for high school and then you moved to Canada uh, and you are studying uh, civil engineering, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Why did you choose civil engineering in specific? Uh, honestly, at first, I wanted to do architecture, and I was torn between that uh, alongside business and film. But uh, I just think engineering is is good because it gives you a way of thinking. Like m you find many engineers around you, or like entrepreneurs who are originally engineers, but just going into engineering itself helps you gain a way of thinking, and. It, Part of it, I think it builds a character because the amount of pressure engineers have to deal with uh, sure. during class. Engineers have a mindset, I think. Right. Uh, Nora, tell me more about your hobby, uh, playing squash. It's not a hobby, actually. You've been practicing squash all your life, right? Yeah, I've been playing squash now for almost 11 years. Right. I started uh, pretty late. I was about nine. Yeah. Which is considered a bit old. A bit the, late yeah, for squash. In, in the world of squash. The reason I started was I lived in Kuwait mm -hmm. um, earlier on. And in 2009, the world championships were being played there. And the finals between Egypt's Romy Ashur and Amr Shabana, two arguably of the greatest players to, to ever hold the squash racket. And I was immediately inspired. And I told my dad, I think this is a great sport. Like, <laughs> I. I, I want to try this and yeah. what started off as a hobby turned out to be um, a lifetime like it's I've been doing this for for so long now yeah uh, how many tournaments did you participate in well um, internationally I've, pra I've participated in two in France and Austria mm -hmm. uh, obviously I play for at, in like for on college level so I play the the league in Canada and the US Mm -hmm. uh, but here in Egypt, I played around um, eight to ten tournaments per uh, per season. Mm -hmm. So we could say about forty to fifty tournaments, maybe in my whole life. I think I've played in almost one hundred and fifty, maybe two hundred matches even. Oh, tell me, uh, what what was the last one? What was the last international tournament that you participated in? The very last one was in the Canadian League. Yeah. Uh, we played uh, versus another university. I, I played for West University, which is Canada's number one team. Uh, we played versus Laurier, one of the best teams in Canada, of course. And we were able to win all our seven matches. Mm -hmm. And I won my match uh, in three sets. Mm -hmm. And so far, our team has been doing great results this season. Tell me what did squash or sports in general add to you on the personal level? 
in general, sports helps you gain discipline. The fact that you're, you're always balancing between one thing and another and not giving one thing an edge over the other um, always helps you gain discipline because you always need to follow a very strict schedule in a way, especially mm -hmm. when I'm abroad and I'm living alone and I have other responsibilities. But I always know that my classes are from that, this time to that time and then I have training here. So I need to get a bit of studying between the two or like eat or something. But squash specifically, I think it's, uh, squash is very good because it helps you, it helps you really well with your, with your mind and your way to think because the sport, despite its fast pace and its agile nature, it's a sport that teaches you to, to wait and always to be waiting for, for something to happen because you always need to take the opportunity taking the ball, which mm -hmm. reflects in life that you always need to wait until you get an opportunity which you need to seize it and then achieve what you're looking for. Yes. Uh, with regards to the issue of uh, balancing your time, uh, time division, uh, time management between your studies and you're not in an easy major, uh, civil engineering at, at the same time, I think squash need lots of hours of training. Tell me more about this. How are you able to manage and uh, how are you able to uh, continue with both sides? First of all, the university itself uh, takes very good care of its athletes whether we're talking physical health, where you, you're, you're treated by its physicians in the, in the unfortunate cases of injuries or, or recovery. Mm -hmm. But in general, you always, it's very, they're very lean with your, with your deadlines. If you have an assignment, but you have a match or like a training or something or an exam, it gets moved because you need to, you need to practice or you need to compete. Mm -hmm. So, of course, this helps me as an individual to, to easier balance between the two. Uh, have a love for community service mm -hmm. and you had some experience with this here in Egypt yeah. back here in Egypt tell me more about this experience so I was an IB student an international baccalaureate student right and part of my graduation uh, profile is to to do some community service so uh, mm -hmm. in my last years of high school my part of our community service we'd go on school trips to uh, Aswan and Alexandria mm -hmm to uh, renovate the houses of those who are unfortunate. And of course, the, the money that funds these trips are all from fundraising events. So mm -hmm. it's basically funded by the students, their donations, and mm -hmm. etc. And this is good because it, shares, it helps share the, the idea of giving to, to those who are in need, of course. Mm -hmm. So uh, we'd go there and we'd spend about uh, two days helping to renovate the houses. And of course, uh, based on the, um, on the preference of the house owners. So for example, when we went to Aswan, they were very, um, they like, they really wanted to the shapes of triangles and like colorful things and drawings. But like in Alexandria, for example, they looked more that the house would be uh, safe enough, for example, because the rain. So mm -hmm. yeah, it differs from, from one city to another and from one culture to another, I guess. Mm -hmm. So you arranged for uh, uh, some events for fundraising, then you went uh, to Aswan and Alexandria uh, to um, um, renovate uh, some of the houses of the needy people. Uh, how did this experience add to you on the personal level? Of course, the school helping us and being the main organizer behind all this, because at the end of the day, we went as our school and not just as individuals. But on the personal level, um, 
it makes me very thankful for, for what I have and learning not to take anything for granted. And of course, it helps me connect with, with people that I wouldn't usually connect or meet with on, on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. So just spending two days with these people, about six hours a day, so you, you get to know these people really well. And like, you, you, you get to, uh, to have an experience that helps you, again, grow as a person because mm -hmm. I guess this is the main goal of life, to, to grow as an individual. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, like... Like, personally, when I went to Alexandria, for example, I think this was my first actual encounter with, uh, with engineering, when I had to build a wooden bridge to, uh, to help them pass from one side of the canal mm -hmm. to another. Mm -hmm. And then I, I, I stood there for a couple of minutes just thinking, how am I going to do this? Like, yeah. I'm supposed to... Of to, course, to be you were still in uh, studying. I yeah, mean, exactly. I, I was still a high school student. And, mm -hmm. like, this literally and, and was how did friend. you manage? I mean, you, you need some engineering skills. Mm -hmm. to do so yeah i we just thought about it in a very simple manner yeah nothing too big of course we did a little bit of googling here and there but there was nothing too huge for us to think about we just uh, we just tried to be as convenient and as safe as possible of course because yes we can't risk the lives of, of course uh, of others Right. Uh, during your middle and high schools, you were elected several years to represent your peers in the student council. Mm -hmm. How was that and how was it uh, beneficial? For me, since I was uh, at a very young age, uh, I, I just loved uh, to have a, a position of, uh, of leadership, really. It was nothing that I looked for, but it was something that rather always came my way for some reason. And what's great about this is that you have some people who, who put their trust and faith in you and they expect you to, to deliver their messages across whether to make the school a better place in general or just to, to someone like higher in the hierarchy of, of the school. So being these people's voices is, is a big responsibility of course, but it's mm -hmm. definitely worth it. Mm -hmm. You also have an artistic side. You have a love for uh, cinema and uh, I don't know uh, what other artistic sides. Maybe you can tell us. Yeah, I mean, I love cinema. I really love cinema. That's why I was considering even going into film. And if you think about it, film and engineering are at the total opposite side of the, uh, of the spectrum. So um, the reason I love cinema because I think it's, it's really important how, how directors uh, reflect their their ideas mm -hmm. and sometimes even put in uh, some visual motifs to yes. uh, to help deliver a message without just directly saying we are delivering the following message. Mm -hmm. You also use used to join school musicals, mm -hmm. right? How was that? I guess this part of my, my artistic side as well. Uh, when I was younger, I'd be part of the choir, for example. And we'd sing, but then when I when I got a bit older and there and I started, my voice wasn't as good growing up. Uh, I just became one of the backstage crew, yeah, which was also great because just uh, being a manager backstage or just helping out is is great because you get to meet a lot of people from your school. So Nora, we can say you are multitasking now. You uh, used to uh, do musicals at school. You used to uh, play squash. Uh, uh, at the same time, you were engaged in community service uh, back then here in Egypt. Uh, what about your life in Canada? Tell me more about uh, your life as a student living abroad. I mean, my life there is much more focused than it is here because all I really have to do is study and play squash. Mm -hmm. 
of course, this doesn't stop me from having fun here and there because I just need to keep myself mentally healthy all the time, I guess. And of course, squash is an escape for me. Sometimes when I'm, when I'm mad, I, I play squash. But in general, life abroad is much different from here. You have to be much more independent. You have so many much more responsibilities, which we're grateful enough to have parents who, who take care of these things rather than us. But when you go abroad, you have to keep up with the bills, you have to make yourself food, you have to wash, you have to do laundry, all that. And at the same time, you have to study. And if you're an athlete, you have to advance your sports. Mm -hmm. How was your first encounter when you, when you first moved to Canada and you found yourself all alone without the family? My first encounter there, um, I mean, the first year was, was on Zoom. It was online. So you get You were here or there? I was here. Okay. Um, I met a lot of people online, but meeting these people in real life was, was a whole lot different. Mm -hmm. But just going there at first for like the first week, it felt like I was on vacation. Mm -hmm. But then things started getting real. The school routine just implemented itself really in my life. I, I didn't force it. And I just found myself there at moments. I was like, this is real. Like, I'm here. I'm, I'm doing this. And of course, I'd, I'd miss Egypt. I'd miss my family. I'd miss my friends. But then I think on the greater scale and look at the bigger picture, I'm here because I want to study engineering. I want to graduate. I mm -hmm. want to keep playing squash. So I just keep myself driven all the time. And, and why did you choose Canada in specific to continue your, uh, high school, um, your university studies? Uh, the reason I chose Canada really was because Canada is the world's uh, number one nation with the most amount of people with bachelor studies, so people who have completed university. And at the same time, they're a nation that's very diverse. So if we look at Canada, for example, only 4.9% of its uh, population are actual natives. Canada is really a, a world of its own or mm -hmm. a place where all people of all different cultures and backgrounds meet. Mm -hmm. And of course, uh, going to North America in general is better as a student athlete. Yeah. So I just saw Canada as the perfect place considering that my, my university in specific is Canada's number one university for civil engineering and number 12 worldwide. And my team is number one in Canada and Ironic, also number 12 uh, on North America. Yeah. So it just seemed like uh, me and West University was a match made in heaven. Mm -hmm. If you compare cultures between here and there, uh, how would you make this comparison? I mean, as I said, Canada is pretty diverse. So you'd meet a lot of cultures there. But one thing that, um, that suits it perfectly is that they're less conservative than we are here. Mm -hmm. And our conservative nature, I guess, comes from the fact that as, as a country, we're, we're naturally uh, religious, I guess. So we always have a mix. So our culture and our um, everyday life really is partially driven by, by religion. Mm -hmm. But the people here and the people in Canada, they're much more different. Like the people here You'd meet someone and five minutes later, you'd, you'd be friends and you'd be talking about different things. There, as much as people are very respectable and very friendly, it takes time to build a relationship with, with someone, someone and for you to become friends. Yes. Right. Um, if we talk about uh, your future, uh, what are you planning uh, for the future after you finish your education, academic education over there? Are you planning to come back here to Egypt? Or are you planning to stay there? Uh, what are you planning for the future? Genuinely, I, I haven't really thought about this. Um, I just try to, to live, uh, not necessarily every day by its day, but every stage of my life. And just acknowledge that I'm going through a stage and I'm here for a short time and I just need to enjoy it. Mm -hmm. It's great to look at my future, of course, but in the meantime, the, the main goal for me is to, to graduate from, from Western as an engineer and a student athlete. But I guess I would be very open to returning to Egypt one day mm -hmm. because at the end of the day, I was born here, I was raised here, and it only makes perfect sense for me to one day return to my country and be of, uh, of good use and be beneficial to, to Egypt.
Mm -hmm. No, you definitely met a lot of obstacles throughout your uh, time over there, living abroad uh, on your own, uh, and you overcame them. What would you like to tell youth about persistence and perseverance to reach one's goals? I guess I, the, number thing, the number one thing I tell them is that take very good care of your mental health because during your, your weakest of times and your lowest moments, you would be in a very bad uh, state of mental health and you wouldn't even realize it and you'd be saying, no, I'm great, I'm, I'm, I'm doing fantastic. Mm -hmm. But you always have to find yourself a motive. You always have to, to have a goal and just keep your eye on it because this is what's going to keep you driven. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, a very important event took place here in Egypt recently, which is the World Youth Forum, the fourth edition of the World mm -hmm. Youth Forum. Uh, and uh, it was held in uh, Sharm el Sheikh from the 10th to the 13th of January. Maybe you were here in Egypt mm -hmm. uh, during that time. Did you follow the forum and how do you see the significance of uh, youth forums, youth conferences and gathering youth together from different parts of the world, 196 countries, uh, were represented at the forum, youth from uh, different countries were there in Sharm el Sheikh. How do you see the significance of this? I think that the World Youth Forum is a, is a great uh, get-together for, for the world's youth and it's a great opportunity for people to exchange their cultures and again back to square one, grow as individuals. And I, I, I tried to keep up with it really but I, 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 ha I had class like during that time so it wasn't really very convenient, but um, I looked and like they were discussing, uh, I guess the, the main goal of this uh, forum was to discuss environmental uh, issues. Different issues were discussed actually. They discussed climate change, entrepreneurship, human rights, uh, a lot of issues, maybe employment and education mm -hmm. also exactly. were among and the I, topics. Mm -hmm. Exactly, and this takes us back to uh, the UN's uh, Sustainable Development Goals. So the yes. UN has 70 Sustainable Development Goals that are um, targeted to be achieved by the year 2030. Mm -hmm. So the fact that our country is, is looking out to the world and saying we're here, we're, we're, we're trying to achieve some of these goals, I think it's a, it's a great start for, for us as youth and hopefully it will be as beneficial as it can be for our country. Mm -hmm. A great attention is given by the Egyptian leadership to encourage youth, to empower youth. Uh, how far do you see uh, Egypt is empowering its youth? And what do you think is the role of youth uh, towards their countries? The role um, for, for youth, I think that their, their role is to um, look out to their country. It's great that the, that the government is, uh, is empowering youth. That's fantastic. But I also, I also think that if the youth don't have the will to, to take a step and benefit their country and look out for their country, mm -hmm. I think then all this wouldn't be to great use. So it's, it's giving to the youth all the resources they could possibly have and it's our role as youth to, to help our country. Mm -hmm. Uh, what's a message that you would like to uh, give to the youth from your place here? Uh, I mean, I'm still pretty young. <laughs> I'm, I'm only 19, but I guess uh, I've been given a fantastic opportunity to, to have a voice. And if I'm going to say anything to youth, is, um, it's, it's pretty cliche, but uh, just do what you love, do what you believe in, keep yourself driven, mm -hmm. enjoy life. <laughs> Seize every opportunity, really. They're, they sound a bit too motivational, mm -hmm. but 
again, as I said, you have to keep your you have to keep a motive to yourself. Mm -hmm. uh, well, Noor, you you spoke to me about your uh, dreams uh, for the f or plans for the future uh, uh, on the um, academic level. But what about the sports level? I mean, you have a love or uh, for for s uh, squash. So what are you planning for the future? Honestly, um, I think that later on in life, my career as an engineer would overtake my career as a squash player. Mm -hmm. So potentially it would have the, the upper hand. Uh, I'm not really sure if I'm going to go professional anytime because already people my age have gone professional a couple of years ago. Mm -hmm. But at the moment, um, especially that I'm still fighting through a two and a half year injury, I'm playing with an injury right now. Um, I'm just grateful enough to be back on court after being injured for so long. And I'm just trying to, to enjoy what I have right now before I graduate from university and then I find myself um, just doing squash as an individual because having a team behind me, mm -hmm. uh, a team I'm very grateful for, they, they, they keep me driven, they, we look out to each other, having a great coach, uh, such as uh, Chris, I, I hope he's watching this. <laughs> he's but, your coach over there. Yeah, he's my coach yeah. over there, uh, Chris Hanbury. He's a great guy. Yeah. But uh, he, he's always looking out to us. Uh, he, he, he tries to make the team a very safe and um, environment and one that helps us uh, become better squash players, being competitive, but again, having true sportsmanship and having good manners on and off court. Right. Well, uh, Noor, since you have uh, an experience with uh, studying online, how do you assess e-learning? I mean, since we are still in uh, the pandemic uh, and uh, uh, a lot of people are um, obliged to, to study online. So how do you assess e-learning? I mean, at the moment, uh, my, school's, uh, my, my school studies have started last week and um, we're, we're, we're online for the, for the first two weeks of school. And that now that I've taken a semester in person and a whole year and the last two weeks online, I think that it really differs from one person to another. It depends on your pace in class. So if you're someone who, who tends to understand something from the second or third time, watching a lecture or going on Zoom could be easier. But if you're someone who likes to have hands-on work, human interaction, I guess in-person learning is, uh, is better for you. Yeah, well, I would like to thank you very much, Noor Al Adli, a civil engineering student. All the best of luck and thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me today. And uh, dear viewers, uh, many thanks for watching and don't forget next week, same time.